Hello everybody and welcome back to Darkest Dungeon. We are here once again within the Cursed Estate and something, a miracle has happened. They finally released an AMD um, driver that doesn't cause the game to lag like crazy. So I'm actually able to play an update driver now and I don't... Before, I literally had to downgrade my PC drivers, my graphics card drivers, every time I played this game because the latest versions wouldn't work, but it seems... The, the lag has been alleviated, everything seems normal. Uh, but anyways, we have a rather interesting episode ahead of us today. For one, we get to introduce the Cook as a new class, which is going to be interesting, goes on here. Um, and also, we have a new quest ahead of us, the Hallowed Harvest. This is interesting. I am tempted to go ahead with this straight off the bat here. It's only the boss. Short normally means it's just the boss and nothing else. But it is a level 3, which means we should likely take level 3s with us. And I really don't know what to expect from it. So, a little iffy. I, I, I'm, I don't know. I'm scared, but I'm intrigued. Uh, so, first of all, let's get into the backstory of our cook, which is a really cool class, by the way. We can also take a look at what we've got going on here. Um, got some interesting stuff, yeah. Interesting stuff. Uh, severe mood swings isn't great. Um... Only visit the brothel, it is what it is. But let's get into the backstory, shall we? Let's take a little look at the backstory for Gorzon here. So this is Gorzon written by the Crownless King. Not much is known about Gorzon's past. The earliest known story is that um, she appeared at a wedding, started cooking for the entire party, and stayed in town after. She cooked the dish after she cooked dish after dish, telling stories of meals in the past and the history of each dish. She never stopped. And when she ran low on ingredients, she would kiss his tools, place them down gently, and walk into the woods. Not 20 minutes later, she would come back hauling a wheelbarrow full of ingredients, but coming in front, um, coming in from the opposite side of town in the middle of the same story, as if he'd been talking the entire way. Um, after three years in town, she wandered off, but in all that time, no resident ever saw her without some sort of food in her mouth or in the process of being cooked. She always shared and was delighted by the guests, but even in the late hours of the night, no one ever saw her sleep. She was always eating and cooking. Her only other odd behaviour was um, her propensity to look off into the distance as she talked to you and always addresses everyone as if they were a group. Even if it was just you and her in the room, and never about the subject you were talking about, she would always circle around back to food. So basically, this is a class that, yeah, this 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 old lady is clearly very obsessed with food, uh, and she will be doing a lot of cooking for the people around town. And I'm excited to uh, I'm excited to show her off and play around with her. I have also taken on board some of your guys' ideas in terms of money in the previous episode. What I've done is I've basically just increased the sell cost for certain things in the dungeons and increased the amount of gold stacks we can have just to make it a little easier on the fact that we have so many modded classes. It means that we're not going to be struggling for money in terms of upgrades. But let's have a little look, see what we want to craft for, uh, for this mission. Because we, we probably want to take level 3, so we'll, we'll probably bring a good old healer with Titania. And um, I'm going to go with the de-stealth, just because I have no idea what to expect. And I should probably get that ready just in case. Um, then, this is a wield mission, so I would assume that... Um, would it be bleed would be good here? I don't know for sure on that. Um... Guardian of Never would be interesting to take, but he's relatively low level right now. Um, Renault could be interesting. Awala. Yeah, let's take Awala. He's a powerhouse. We could also bring Eileen here. We've got we to gotta consider the fact that there might be some backline shenanigans here. So let's, let's not be too hasty. Let's maybe bring uh, Koshkin as well. And we'll go with... Damage, we'll go with the pull, we'll go with the stun, and we'll go with the finish him. We'll see how that does. And then, who else do we want? We could bring a level 2 if we wanted to, that wouldn't be a bad idea. Uh, Celia is definitely someone I'm interested in. I kind of want someone that can fall into second line here. Um, again, this could be interesting. That is minus damage and prot as well, which could be quite nice. But again... 
Not a lot of backline damage that's going to help us out too much there, so maybe not. Could go with Dismas um, with a, a more a more ranged build on Dismas. I don't normally do that, but could be interesting. Um, or I could go with Surfy. I haven't brought Surfy out in a little while here. That could also be very, very useful. Um, that is also a bypass stealth as well, which is rather nice. And crits received. Yeah, let's, let's go for this, and then maybe what we'll do is we'll take off one of these skills in favour of... Oh, actually, that does mark. Okay, we can mark with that, and we can... Do we have anything else that we can mark with here? Um, okay, that also marks too. Okay, so we've got... I think this is an okay group of gals here. Uh, let's just make sure they're all upgraded and raring to go, shall we? Uh, so we got... Oh, we got a lot of money to spend here. Ugh, doesn't feel good. Okay, a lot of money to spend here. Um, go with them two and the heal. I don't particularly care about that one as much. Although that is plus accuracy. Yeah, let's let's go for it. It is revenge that we want to upgrade, isn't it? Yeah, revenge. It's going to be costly, but it just kind of is what it is. And then we go boom, boom, and... Oh, gosh, yeah, this is a lot of money. <laughs> Like I said, though, that's why we've got the higher sell prices here. Um, and then we also have to upgrade that armor as well. This is the thing that was really going to cost us. Six grand pair. Oh, we, we actually can't even afford to do all of these guys. Do you know what? I'm going to do it anyways, and I'm going to sell some trinkets that we just haven't been using. Um, sell... Right, let's let's go back down to the the weedy ones. Yeah, I don't I don't use that. 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 That's okay. That's okay. That's okay. That's fine. We don't need two of those. We don't need two of those. That's fine. Uh, da 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 da. That's fine. That can go. No, never going to use that. That can go. Never going to use that. That can go. Okay. It's a little tricky. One of those can go. That can go. That can go. Okay, I think we're good there now. Right, there you go. See, lot, not much money here, but you got everyone upgraded. This is what I mean by money is going to be tight. So this is why I needed to upgrade our sell costs for things, because, yeah. Things were getting into a bad way. So, trinket up. Let's first of all just check for class-based trinkets. You've got this, which is buff your accuracy by a lot, which I like. You're definitely taking the healing, as well as, I think, the max HP. Although, actually, max HP is pretty good, pretty good on you compared. Um, maybe I'll just give you the resistances. Yeah, let's give you the resistances. Although, actually, no, I don't want to be lowering your speed, thinking about it now. Anything else that would fit you? Let's 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 add let's add more speed. There you go. Just plus some speed. Move resist might be a mistake to lose, but I'm happy enough with that. Then here we want to go with. You've only got 34 HP, so you can take this for that boost to your HP. And then you definitely want to go with the double damage setup, getting that very very high damage range there. And then here we'll go with the resists and. I kind of want Daruma here, but I it might be a mistake to remove damage off of this guy. I don't really know. It's hard to say. Um, yeah, let's just go with the resists and extra, extra accuracy, shall we? Okay. Okay, so I think we're ready. Um, I think we're good to go. This is a slightly risky thing to do because I've not really been on a, a level 3 mission yet. 
And um, the trinket isn't insanely good, but it's, it's pretty good. Uh, but let's uh, let's just get our provisions ready and try this out, shall we? I mean, we never know until we go in. Now, this is a big stopping point for me here, because I have absolutely no idea how much of these things I'm going to need. In theory, I shouldn't need any shovels, but I'm going to bring I'm going to bring two of everything just in case. I I don't think I'll need them. Oh, also, one other thing I did actually. Um, is, and I'll also bring a mess of torches as well. Uh, one other thing I did actually as well, is I made it so that every single one of these sells back for their original price. So in the way the game, the game, the way the game normally works is if you, if you have like four holy water when you leave a mission, you get 20% of what it costs you to buy them back. Whereas now I've just made it so that if I bring provisions back with me, I get the full cost recuperated. Because in my mind, it, that makes sense. If I'm going to bring holy water with me and I don't use it, therefore I could just use it for next time. So why would it sell for less? So I, I've, I've changed that. Um, anyways, let's embark and see what we can get going on here. I'm a little scared, I'll, I've got to admit, but I think we have to try new things. And we can always duck out if we need, so let's embark. Elsewhere, lowborn superstitions would um, would be met with mockery, but only the stars know what horrors the state might have brought forth. Ooh. Okay, and let's get into a diary entry as well here. So, uh, this is from Rockerin. The clang of steel, the heat of flame. The customer waits in the forge's main counter area, watching the smith work, having lit his pipe from an ember held by the cap um, capillaries, all seeming joyous and prepared for some um, something the travellers noticed. So... What are we waiting on? Is, this, is his forging a unique method or something? Pah, of course not. The man has a voice of a, <laughs> of a cigar-smoking angel, always belting off old shanties from his time at sea. The white-bearded man bellows a word. Request? As an apparent regular responds, Whiskey Johnny, smiling in, ag in agreement from the others as well um, as the smith. A fine choice. Y'all all know the chorus. And now I have to sing. <laughs> Whiskey is the life of a man. Always was, uh, always was since the world begin. The crowds join the man, start, um, startling the traveller. Though he begins to smile, joining in and spending his time with them, lost in the joy of the song. Whiskey, oh Johnny, oh John, rise um, here. John, rise her up from down below. Whiskey, whiskey, oh. Up aloft from his yard must go. John rise hair up from down below. I've um yeah. I really like that. I'm I'm very poor at uh, like figuring out how to read something as lyrics. So I apologize if I butchered the song. Um, <laughs> but uh, basically, I really like the idea of like this whole old hearty um, sea shanty being sung by everyone. It's really really nice. But yeah. I, I unfortunately cannot sing or read rhythmically for shit, so I apologize for that. Uh, but anyways, let's jump on into this and see what we can get done. Um, okay, so this guy has blocks. He's uh, going to drop something on us by the looks of things here. Uh, we've also got this bird, which is regurgitating things. Um, stun is only 10% chance on this. I guess we stun the bird first. I don't know whether to kill the bird or him first. Um, I'm really not sure, but I'm going to just try and put damage on the bird for now. And see what we can do. Um, let's let's mark you. Um, that unfortunately doesn't get rid of a block, but it does add mark to you, which is nice. And then, yeah, the bird's almost dead already. Awesome. So feed the soil. So that is what that does. It gives us horror as well. The horror isn't so bad. The damage actually wasn't as terrible as I was expecting it to be, so that's fine. We can heal ourselves up for 10. Okay, we should be alright with that. Um, we'll do that to remove a block and kill the bird. So that's you dead. It seems the wheat is just going to be something we can't do anything about. We do have an AoE hurt there. I'm going to pull him because that's going to re-up the mark and get rid of his block. Oh, really? A dodge? Okay, he does have a bit of prot and a bit of dodge. Feed the soil coming in again. That's going to be the move that really causes issues, especially if he follows up with another attack straight away. Wow. Um, yeah, I think we just go for damage now. Party heal across the board. I don't like you having such low HP here. I think I can move people's positions to like make sure they don't take the damage, but I'm not sure if that's a great idea right now. 
huge damage there as well. Okay, we're, we're doing really good damage to this guy. I think we should be okay here. That, that did a lot of damage. Wow, dude. Could you, could you stop with her, please? I'm going to try and switch these two around. Um, yeah, okay. Just so she doesn't take that damage again, because that would be a bit much. Protect the crops. Oh my god. So he does have stealth. He does have stealth. Um. Festering fear. Really? Why is it? What's, what's with this position? Why does he really love that position? It's getting a little bit treacherous. Buckshot still hits here. Oh, bollocks. Okay, we've got problems because now everyone's un like not positioned correctly and this is not really working. Um, okay, that does hit you. Good. And it does mark you. Good. Oh, this is a real pain in the ass, this. Th this whole thing with the feed the soil. It's causing some severe issues. <laughs> Just do it on someone else. Si finally. Thank you. Weed out the weak. Oh, Lord. Okay. Um, Titania's going to be on low HP here, uh, most likely. Let's move you forward again. I really don't like having to do this, but I need to de-self him. Free up your mark. We're doing good damage. I'm really worried here about Titania. Okay, 15's not so bad. We can deal with that. We can deal with that. Again. He must, he must just go for the weak. That must just be how he works. Oh, we got him. Nice. Okay, okay, okay. Taken care of. And we get two trinkets. Wow. Okay. Good stuff here. Awesome. Return to Hamlet. That was a really cool battle. We managed that like pros, I think. I think that was... That turned out to be a really good build for that guy. I'm actually kind of surprised that the uh, the de-stealth ended up playing such a major role. I just... When you don't know what you're coming up against, I feel like de-stealth is something you have to take with you. Um, and yeah, I just thought, let's try that out. And it, it kind of worked out for us pretty well there. We also got two trinkets out of that. Um, if we take a look, we've also got potential new town member to bring on board. Flagellant finally coming on board. People have been waiting for one of those for a while, so we'll bring him on board. And we'll leave that. We'll check if we've got any good trinkets about that we can afford. Clearly not. Um, right, so, first things first, let's just remove our trinkets and rearrange. Um, and we want to just check on the new trinkets we got. Okay, so we got this ring. Minus 50% stress, minus 20% maximum HP is pretty awesome. I really like the idea of that. And we also got this crow. Plus 50% food consumption, minus 20 stun resist. On attack, debuff target, minus 20 stun resist. Seems reasonably good. I, I, I don't really know how often I'd get use out of that, but it seems reasonably good. Um, right, okay. So let's get into another die ranger here, shall we? Um, we'll go for another one straight off the bat. So this is from Dr. Stanvish Junkie, Blood and Silver and Puppet Master Production. A group of noblemen leave at dusk for a late night hunt. The forest is lit by a full moon. The men check their horses, their rifles, their morale, and they surprise uh, and the, their surprise passenger, a young woman named Celia, filling in for her father while he's away on a bus on business elsewhere. The riders take off into the woods, bounding out of the city gates into the untamed lands beyond, hooting and hollering in joy for the only time they truly get to lower their masks they're forced to wear among the polite um, society. A beast lies in wait, tr uh, watching the, the, the troop enjoy their night as it snarls and crawls at the dirt, claws at the dirt that's been bloodied with its most recent kill. But the beast is unsatiated. It's hungry for more. It hungers for men. The horse stops, one of the hunters complains at the lack of game, dismounting his steeds so he can relieve himself away from the group. The beast breathes, taking in the scent of the vulnerable man flesh. It snarls and pounces, wrapping its jaws around his throat before he can even scream. The horse panics, charging away in all directions with their frightened riders unable to control them. The beast is faster than the horse, and, uh, faster than the horse, and the chase only makes it more fun. 
The hunters die off one by one until all that is left is the woman. Celia has abandoned her horse, taking her chances on foot against the monster she's barely caught a glimpse of. She can hear it move about in the trees around her. Unarmed and afraid, the woman knows little else she can do besides drop down and admit defeat, making easy prey for the monster. The beast attacks her, but she feels only a moment of pain from the teeth sinking into her throat but it hisses in pain and runs off when its tongue touches the silver necklace she wears. Teela is left bleeding from the monster, wounds in, in the dirt, gasping for air and clutching the wounds as more pain begins to form in other parts of her body. Bones break, muscles tear, clothes rip and skin peels away to reveal fair like a dog's. Her jaw breaks and her face cracks to extend into a snout, growing new teeth and designing, and designing to tear new flesh. A new werewolf is born. It howls at the full moon before sprinting off into the night for its maiden feast. Wow. That is an amazing bit of backstory for Celia there. I really want to bring her out again because she's just a really cool class. Uh, so we'll try and make that happen here. Uh, let's see what else we've got going on here because we've probably got quite a few to go for. Uh, the Brigand 8 Pounder uh, with the unique charm is uh, another boss we could go for here. The Swine Prince is there. Um... Just straight up plus five speed is kind of incredible there. Um, Sodden crew we could go for as well. We could do more stuff on the um, Sunward Isles, which I'd kind of like to go for, to be honest. Let's uh, see what crew we can create and maybe think about going out there. Uh, quickly, just I need to check. Do we actually have a backstory for a... Um, for a... What are they called? What the hell are they called? The class that we just picked up. I, I cannot remember what they're called. Did I not just pick one up? Oh, there he is. Uh, flatulent, yeah. I, I, I cannot remember. Fla flagellant? Fla flatulent? It's not flatulent, it's flagellant. <laughs> That's two very different things. Uh, I don't think we ever already have a backstory for them, but someone has definitely claimed doing a backstory for them, so I'm looking forward to seeing that come forward. Been waiting on this class to appear for a good while now, so it's good to take them on board. Uh, but yeah, let's let's try and design a group that's going to be good for going out here. Um, we definitely want Viara because we just need more money. Um, that's just going to be a mainstay at the moment. And we'll take out some level 2 so we can level up. I think Lysander in the front with the heels. I want to bring Celia out as well, as I said. Um, and maybe do Guardian of Never. I don't know how Bleed does in the Sunward Isles, but I think it should be okay. I'm gonna, I think I'm going to go with this. Um... We want to go with 20% healing skill as well as 35% for a massive boost to healing. Then I think Celia, you get the, the damage bonuses, buffing your damage by quite a bit. Guardian of Never. Do we have anything bleed related that we could give to you? To be fair, you have quite low HP, um, so I don't know what to give to you. Maybe I just give you the bonuses to that, and then... Do you have, a, like, an attack that hits multiple? You do? Okay, so let's go with let's go with the Daruma on you, then. That works out for us. And then here we want to go with the 25% prot mixed with the um, buff to maximum HP, which I think puts us in a very, very good position to keep you alive. Um, so healing-wise, of course, we have ourselves here doing some good healing. Uh, let's see if we can upgrade anyone's gear here. See what we can get done. Guardian of Never needs a few upgrades. I realise our money right now is tight, so I don't want to go crazy. Um, I think for you, I just want to buff this and buff your armors. Like, I don't really care about your uh, stuff here. I just want to buff your base HP and your armor. And then you can go in there as well. We can do both of yours. Okay, we're in a decent position now, I think. Well, Zandy, you don't need any uh, buffs to your stats, do you? No, we're all good here. We're all good here. Right, I think we're good to go on another adventure here. And I think we're going to go to the Sunward Isles for another medium-length mission. Uh, in terms of camping, do we have... We do have a prevent time at nighttime ambush. Good, good. We'll grab our provisions. Um... We're going on a medium, so we'll take 20 food. We'll go 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3. We'll go with 
16 torches, and we'll bring a few minor. Oh, we don't have enough money for, for them. Okay, we'll sell that back. We won't, we won't bring any minor Oromoris out with us, because they're expensive. Um, and I think we're good to go here, so we'll embark again. And again, we'll go for another diary entry here, shall we? Um, one moment. Oopsie, I accidentally clicked there, but here we go. Um, we've got another one from Dr. Savage Junkie. This is the confessional. Um, the abbot sits in the abbey's confessional booth, um, sweating and nervous, shaking from the horror he's been subjected to for the last hour by the occupants of the other uh, side of the dividing wall. Orwell recounts his deeds as lord of his own domain with glee. With glee. He can remember every life he's took with detail and gladly describes them to the unfortunate priest he shares his booth with. Ah, but alas, all good things come to an end, so they say. My fun ended when I met her. Shortly afterwards, anyways, Orwell recounts, staring blankly at the warped wood of the booth's door in front of him. The abbot sighs and swallows, somewhat relieved to no longer be listening to the grisly executions. You've mentioned her a few times. Who was she? I, I can't remember her name, but I know her face. He said, she, um, he said she'd be here, but I haven't seen her yet. Who's he? He's me, who I used to be before I came, became this. He's very smart, if a bit rude. Is that how you were? That's how I am. How he is. He knows her name, I think. But he won't tell me. He says I don't get to know her name until he gets to remember her face. I know her face. He knows her name. Do you want to know her face? I think we're out of time. I must hear the rest of my congregation as well, my son. I see. Well, we'll see you next week then, father. After the door has opened and closed, the abbot sighs and mutters under his breath. By the light, I hope not. Amazing stuff. Wow. I'm really liking all these intricate pieces of lore we're getting for each of these characters. It's just, it's impressive writing. It really is. People are doing some amazing stuff. Right, so we have a bit of a bleed build going on here. I don't know how well it'll go. Um, you've touched something. I mean, lucky you. <laughs> uh, did we get rid of a quirk there? Is that what happened? I mean, I'm certainly okay with that. Wasn't expecting it, but I'm okay with it. Trap disarm. Hey, you got 100. Nice. Uh, one thing I didn't really think about is bringing Viara here. I don't know there's many curios we can, like, get stuff from. Like, I, don't, I know I don't want to talk to her. So she, this might not have been the best idea, but eh, it is what it is. Oh, we got one of these things again. Hello. Okay. And everything has high bleed resist. <laughs> Mistakes were made, people. Mistakes were made. I didn't know. Yeah, nothing bled there. Okay, so this is going to be a bit rough. This is going to be a bit rough. Um, this isn't going to be quite the uh, quite the stompage I was hoping for, I don't think. But we'll see what we can get done regardless. We'll see what we can get done. Um... Guard, ally there, nice. So we can mark us. Let's let's do that. Mark ourselves. Get our uh, repost going. At least we got our dodge high here. Quickens. There we go. Turn to the werewolf. We are the beast now. Wow. Lysander just goes in there for an absolutely cracking hit. I gotta say, I like that. Okay, Repost is definitely the way forward for us here. Repost is definitely the way forward for us here. Okay, we did get some bleed on there. We go for that. We do good damage here regardless, I like that. One good thing to know is that um, I think we um, we have an attack here that... Um... Okay, that buffs... <sighs> Buff self, lead. Okay, maybe we do it. I thought we had one that lowered their bleed resist, but maybe not. Okay. The hammer comes down. We will talk to this with you. The splendor, extra accuracy and speed buffs. I like that. We have 28 dodge currently. <laughs> okay. 
We make our way back. We make our way back. Now don't don't talk to her. I didn't really think about the fact that Viara is not actually going to have that many curios to interact with here. So I think in all aspects we kind of fumbled the pass here. Um, but we will push forward and see what we can make regardless. Either way, I, I enjoy missions to this area. And there is mini bosses we can come across like we have done in the past. And killing stuff does give reward. Is this a trap? No, it's just another thing you've touched. But yeah, we removed a positive quirk there. Yeah, apparently a lot of the curios in here you can't actually get loot out of, so... Oh, there is one there, though. What on earth is that thing? I have never seen that in my life. It seems like it's going to be doing some stress damage to us. Doesn't this guy have, like, guaranteed crits versus bleeding? Yes, he does. We are going to have to be careful for that. And improvement. we got to heal on you. Do this to potentially set up some bleed. We actually got the bleed in all of them there. You're going to activate the repurst, sadly. Oh, no, you didn't. We might be able to kill you before you do your repurst. If we're lucky. He pushes you up to front. Just keep going on that dodge. That's all we need you for. No one's bleeding thus far. The repurst is really strong on her. Really strong. Nice. Didn't even take the stress. Oh, we get a buff of repurse damage on a crit as well. I thought you were going to end up getting a retaliating rhythm in there. It was to be expected. What what class was it that had the ability to remove repurse the other day? It was our, it was our healer, wasn't it? Our botanist. Because that was a really cool idea. Give them no quarter. So we do have headbutt here, which would push us back one, but it'll stun, so I'm going to go for it. It does bleed us, which means he gets guaranteed crits, but he's stunned, so... Ah, oh, for God's sake, we get 30% damage versus stunned, plus an extra 15%. That would have been a great hit there. Sadly, the game is not on our side there, but we do get a crit here. I like that. We can heal for the damage done. There we go, that's awesome. That does have a chance to give us rabies, though, right? Chance for rabies, yeah. Extra damage versus corpses. Interesting. We'll just finish you off. Ooh, with a crit as well. Lovely. Awesome stuff. And then... Hello, hello. We'll open this up. Nice. We're not really looking for portraits and all that jazz. We're looking for money here, so... Not worried about that right now. Move everyone around. This is a hut. I the light gains purchase. Spirits are lifted. Yeah, I don't think we have what we clear. need to play around with that right now. In radiance, a few more new things here. What on earth? We did get the surprise off, which is nice. Uh, damage wise, we can't kill any of you, but we can get damn close to killing you, which allows us to kill you. There you go. Okay, I like that. Got rid of the stress dealer. Or the major stress dealer right off the bat. A little bit of bleed for everyone. Extra crits received, I like. Okay, that is that is debuffing his bleed resist look. I didn't... Hmm. Oh, it must be you that does that. It, it is. Okay, I knew we had it on someone, but I wasn't sure who. I wasn't quite sure who. This, this, this build's going pretty well, actually. Pretty well. It's working out better than I would have expected. Need to re-up that repurst, really. Um, let's get that heal on you. Get the repurst going. Change to beast form as well very, very soon. Filthy hide. Is that going to be a heal? Not quite sure what that was. Maybe that's a charge-up move. Okay, nice. You died to bleed. We can get our dodge all the way up to 27. That's huge. Awesome. And there's the change coming over. That should be you dead, right? Yeah, nice one. Get you healed up as well, my good lad. 
But yeah, everyone's doing a fine job right now. Um, Minor Onomori, we'll get rid of that for now. We're all about to cash, cash, cash. Again, another new enemy here. A lot of new guys in these uh, later on missions. I like this because it hits everyone for a bit of bleed, but also gets that crits received started. I'm gonna go for taunt straight away here. And we'll go for a hammer smack. Actually, we'll go for a stun on this guy, actually. Ah, no stun, but good damage regardless. No repulse there, because that doesn't deal damage. That noise is kind of disturbing. Oh, wow. That was a big hit. That was a rather large hit. You're going for the, the, the person that has repulse here. Another kind of large hit, but we do get the uh, transformation here, which is great. Celia going beast mode. The dodges are helping out a ton. I think here we want to do feast, don't we? What? That hits all enemies? Excuse me? What the hell? I didn't realise they hit all enemies. That's insane damage. Okay. It has a lot less damage and crit versus not bleeding. We have a pretty good combo here that I didn't even realise. That's awesome. Guard there for the big heal. I'm liking this a lot. You're dead as well. How the tide turns. My oh my. How the tide turns. This expedition at least promises success. Okay, I'm liking the way this is going thus far. The promise of safety. Is this incense to light? Forgotten incense. Yeah, we light this, don't we? Gives everyone stress um, healing received, yeah. Okay, just keep it pushing on. Another one of these people. I still don't know if there's a positive outcome for those guys. Um, I'd imagine bandages for this. Yeah, nice one. Okay, that's a buff though. Um, armor piercing received, okay. Yeah, not many things that we can get treasure from, but the, the battles themselves are giving us good stuff. Also, by the way, I realize some people have said that I should leave everything, then t douse my torch, and then go and get everything after. But honestly, I just forget to do stuff like that all the time. So it's not a good tactic for my, my forgetful brain. Scouting is good here. Go up this way. They're really not doing too well with the um, antiques, to be honest. Or cash, to be honest, either. We've not got, not got much gold, either. More scouting. Good, good. Another pack. That's good stuff. That is good stuff. Right, so we have a bit more of a, a sort of plan now for how to engage with these guy, with these two specifically. I really like the combo with these two. So here we're just going to go with a guard, heal everyone up a little bit. Then with this we go with that, and we hopefully get bleed on both of them. We do indeed. Then here we want to transform. Um, change to beast mode, activate repost. It does shuffle us though. I don't like the idea of shuffling us. I'm going to go with this and then try and get into beast mode as quick as I can. Damn it. Ooh, that's a big hit. No bleed, though. And there's the beast mode. Awesome. You've been deaded. How many more rounds of bleed you got? You got another few rounds of bleed going, so that's fine. You might die here anyways. You did. Hit me with a stress move and I, I healed stress there. 
And then, yeah, Feast does great damage and heals us. That's such a like, insanely useful move. Heal up that. Whip that boy. Whip that shark. More crits received. I was trying to get a crit. I was fishing for a crit there. I shouldn't have gone for it. Just wanted to get that stress down a little bit. What's this? Not very good. Uh, more potential stuff there. Uh, let's get rid of them. Go for that. And this bad boy up. I will do this battle here as well. Why not? Scary boys. Scary boys. Uh, but I think with our dodge and stuff, we should be fine here. Good dodge there. See? I think we've I think we figured out a good plan going forward. Such good dodges, people, such good dodges. Oh, beautiful. What what's your stun resist? Your stun resists are both quite high. Let's just go for a hammer hit. Might of a demon. Another dodge. Great stuff. The taunt. Ignore my mark, you devil. And the dodge just keeps going. So we've now enabled the ability to feast. Masterfully executed. Got those guys bleeding even more. You're dead to the repost. This this Celia is an insanely good class. The power we can put out here is pretty amazing. I mean, I don't even really need to do Feast other than clearing corpses anymore, but I'll still do it. I will still do it. I mean, no, I don't even need to. All the corpses are cleared now anyways. Bit of horror. Go with a headbutt, maybe? What, what does this do? Uh, so it buffs us with extra speed and dodge in human mode, and gives us a bit of stress relief. Okay, so let's try that out. We do lose our repose, but we get some stress relief. We got we got cured as well. What does it cure us of? It clears mark and clears horror. So that was a good idea to clear the horror off of us. And because we got the stress healing received, it worked really well for us. No bleed for you, of course. We need to take those wood carvings with us. They are money. Awesome. Okay, that kind of worked out pretty well. Right, back we go. Back we make it. But yeah, I think putting this team together was a so slightly unlikely but surprisingly effective team. A bit worried about camping now with the low amount of food we have, so I think I'm going to leave camping until we need it at the end. Oh, another one of those to disarm. Good fella. Good guy. And we'll see if we have any battles left. No torches left, though. We're all out of torches. Okay, we're, we're all good. Um, let's uh, do a camp. A moment of respite. A chance to steal oneself. A little bit of stress healing across the board. Any other prevent nighttime ambushes we have that would be better? Or cheaper? That's five. That's four. Okay, so we go with that one. And then produce a random trinket is probably a good idea. See what we get. We oh, we just sold one of those. Um, attempt to craft the cleansing elixir. Okay, that was just food. 
Used to remove stuns from your party. Oh, that's amazing. Can be brought to the hamlet. Okay, I like that. I like that a lot. Cool. We'll leave it there then. Nice one, guys. We'll do another uh, backstory here. Another diary entry. My, my apologies. Um, we've got another one from Rooker in here. Terror in the night. The man's blood is p um, pounding. His vision is blurred. Wiping the substance that caught him in the eyes. Half blind and panicked, he runs. Faster than he's thought possible. No plan. No idea where to go. It happened so fast. The three were used in their protection racket. Um, they could have easily slipped the guard and a good um, and good at picking their marks. But this night was oddly quiet. Not a single patrol. Why? Then they saw him. The hunter of a man with an axe. Hooked rope and other tools. He stared at them in the still of night and simply held up a notice, uh, notice with their faces and t uh, tapped next to the text, dead or alive. He drew his knife, um, figuring a cut or two would make him back off, but the killer was already in motion. A small pelt flew and a bright light filled the alley. His eyes burned as his head, uh, as he heard the crunch of burn and steel colliding. As his vision cleared somewhat, he saw Fritz laying face down and Shiv was currently having an axe pulled from his body as he ran. He got maybe a block before he hooked, uh, before the hook tripped him. He turned to see the hunter, coiling the rope as he scooted back, pleading, throwing coins, saying whatever he thought might work to give him an opening. A sigh. I let, I, I, I let you choose. Live, die. Your choice. You choose to die. As the last thing he, um, as, as the last thing the thug saw was the axe swinging him down without mercy. Wow. <laughs> God damn. Brutal stuff. Right, let's go back see what sort of money we made off of this. Hopefully, something not too bad. Yeah, 20,000 off the medium mission ain't too bad. Ain't too bad. Um, ooh, minus 40% skill upgrade. We also got Creeping Cough on Guardian of Nether, which we're going to want to get rid of. And Weak Heart here. Uh, yeah, we'll get rid of both of those. We'll get rid of both of those. Right, on a quiz. See if we've got anyone new we want to bring on. Jester. We've been waiting for a Jester for so long. But we will need to upgrade our stagecoach to increase our roster size. Let's bring on our Jester. We've been waiting on a Jester for a very, very long time. Um, so I'm glad to have uh, brought one of them on board. Finally. We still only have 25,000 uh, gold. We're really struggling for gold. Um... So we might have to do a few more runs with Yara there to just try and make that up. But let's have a look. Who do you want to treat? Guiding and Never for the Creeping Cough. And Viara for the Weak Heart. Good, good, good. Both of you can go in there. Quickly check this out. Echo Damage versus Unholy is pretty awesome. Another one of those rings is pretty decent. But we'll leave it there for now. Uh, we'll go over our last few backstory diary entries and we'll leave it there. So two from Penn Simmons here. One from Eileen. So here's some news. The witch um, Mon Monic Monica Monica. The witch Monica took my saying, "Watch the place while I'm out," to mean take the center of stage and call yourself the ringmaster. I mean, she's a woman after my own heart. But the gal to uh, the goal to not even wait until the seat's cold. Well, she put up a challenge to those heroes, and I'm going to accept it. Doubt she expected me to join the fight, and this way I can put up my um, chosen fighters on the stage. Give them a taste of the fight with an audience. Chaos, Awala, Kimber, uh, and me. Or maybe I put in a wild card, the madman in the straitjacket, all well. This is something important. Monica has a certain entity, uh, has the entirety of the Butcher's Circus to choose from, though I have much more interesting choices. Uh, choices. They have not experienced the same ring. So this is actually in reference to the fact that we have a quest to fight the Ringmaster. Of course, the logic of this in terms of having our own Ringmaster class makes little to no sense because we'll be fighting the Ringmaster herself. But as we said here, uh, Monica is the new Ringmaster and um, it seems Eileen already has a well-established group of people that she wants to bring out with her. Uh, let's just take another look at who that was again. So she wants to bring out um, Chaos, Awale, and Ki Kimber. Uh, I think all of those level three, right? Um, while I okay, so Chaos is 
Wait, are they? Uh, so, Chaos Yet, level 3. Kimber, level 3. Eileen, level 3. Awale, level 3. Okay, so maybe that's what we're going to do next week, then. We're going to go take on the Ringmaster. Um, in terms of what we've got in terms of the actual trinkets, we've got the Buffanonta. Buff? Buff on Atta? Buff on Atta. Extra damage. Damage while bleeding, while blight, while mark. Extra damage to stress. Okay, so that's just a bunch of extra damage. I like that. And we've also got the Royal Guard here, which adds prep, healing skill, heal received, and a minus to dodge and crit if in position one. Kind of interesting. Um, I guess maybe good on a healer. We'll see uh, how that plays out in the future. Uh, but that's that seems like a really good team to me. I think we'll uh, carry those guys into the next quest and see how that goes. Uh, but one last, one last one we've got to go over here. This is uh, another sort of story, again, by Penn Simmons in the tavern. A man sits sipping on ale. Something about him seems vaguely familiar to the barkeep, but he knows he's never seen that face. He would remember the scars, a face hardened like a seasoned warrior, but he had the build of a, an attire of a streetwalker. He could be a circus fighter. The man's eyes look to the middle um, distance like watching a ghost in the centre of the room. His hands are steady as he drinks, but he sits low, like he's re ready to dart for the door at a moment's notice. What's your name, kid? Asks the barmaid as she wipes down the table. The man looks at up, up at her like he j realized she was there. Like he just realized she was there. John. John Doe, he says. She smirks, but the smile drops when she realizes he wasn't smiling. Oh, okay. Nice to meet you, John. I'm... Doesn't matter. I'll be gone soon. Names are meaningless. All right. Well, shout me if you need anything. The bartender hears a sadness in the, world's uh, in the words despite how cold John said them. The barmaid just caught uh, the bite, but there's more here. The man sips the ale like it's his last. He savours it. He clutches in his uh, free hand some dark fabric with almost anger. The bartender's curiosity gets the better of him and he calls out. That was rude of you, how you talked to Sarah. Meant nothing by it. Just can't be taking names. I just have today. I recognise you from somewhere. Might be so, but you don't know me. I've been dead for years. The bartender blinks and walks from the bar to sit in front of the man. As he gets closer, he sees the hang um, sees the hangman's scar, the jagged lines left by the noose. A ghost in my bar? Wouldn't be the first, the barman says with a false chuckle. Of sorts, the man sets a small bag of gold, much more than the ale is worth, in front of the bartender. You run a fine establishment. Thank you, John. Just, the man gets up to leave, revealing the executioner's hood and rope in his hand. If you see me in the hood, don't uh, don't reference today. He won't remember me. Mm, this is mysterious. I like it, though. Really mysterious. But either way, I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. Another successful outing. And we didn't have anyone die, even though I went against a boss I wasn't prepared for. Either way, hope you guys enjoyed, and I'll see you guys in the next one.